What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so moving right along, I've wanted to tackle this video for a really, really long time now, and that is exporting stems in Studio One, or more specifically, tracks versus channels. All right, so really quickly, let's talk about stems. I'm sure most of you know what stems are by now, but if you want a really quick example, if you're ever working on a track and you say to somebody, hey, can you add some additional production? They say, sure, send me the stems. You'd go ahead and you'd be expected to render stems for your production. So this could be something like all of your drums in one stem, or maybe they want separate stems, so you'd end up with kick, snare, hats, that kind of thing or perhaps you're mixing a project or you're sending a project out to mixing and somebody says, yeah, sure, send me the stems. Now, two ways to look at this, one would be completely raw audio and the other would be kind of based upon what you've already done in your song. And we're gonna be dealing with that example. We'll take a look at raw audio in a completely separate video. So as we know, if we go to song, we have this option to export stems. Now, when we export stems, we have two different options, channels or tracks. Now the really simple explanation is that tracks are anything that are residing in your range window and channels are anything that's coming out of your console. Because as we know, one track in Studio One can actually have multiple channels. And a great example of that would be if we're taking a look at, for example, an Impact XT instrument, which has one track, but because these pads over here are routed to different outputs, it ends up having multiple channels. So what's the difference? Well, as we know, we have one track where essentially all of this note data, in this particular case, it's a pattern part, but regardless, we have all the MIDI information or note data that's sitting on the track and that's triggering the different channels. So we have two different options here. If I wanted to export stems, and let's say I wanted to export this as a mix down, then I could choose the track option. You'll notice that we only have one track and we have all these different channels. Really quickly, let's do one thing just to kind of drive this point home. A lot of people, myself included, actually like to have access to all of the channels in their range window. So one way that we can do that is simply by creating automation tracks for each one of these channels over here. And then if I drag them into my range window, we kind of have an automation track that's linked to this channel. So if I make a move on this fader, that it will follow. Now, even if you have automation tracks that are created for your channels, when you're using the export stems option, you'll notice when we choose tracks, we still only have a track that is an actual track by definition in Studio One. Okay, so let's just back up over here and let's get rid of these for a moment. Okay, so let's export some stems here. If I wanted to, for example, say, all right, I want all of these drums rendered into one stem, but I have all of these channels. That's when we would use the tracks option. So if we take a look at this, let's go ahead and delete our file name prefix. I'll leave this alone between the loop. Um, let's leave preserve mono tracks unchecked for now, and I'll try to circle back and touch base on this at the end of the video. But the main thing here is I want to import back into my track. Let's go ahead and do that. So now when I export stems and I use the track function, you'll notice that it renders all of the tracks, anything that's associated with that instrument gets rendered into a new track. So we only have one track. Okay, now let's use the other options. So let's go to song and we'll go to export stems. And this time I wanna choose channels instead of tracks. Let's deselect this one. We only have the channels that are associated with this Impact XT instrument. In this case, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll bring these back in. So now what's happening is it's going to actually render a new audio file for each one of these channels that was associated with this instrument. So the main difference here is the channels were split up into different outputs and we were able to bring those all in. You'll see we have kick, clap, snare, cymbals, perk, crash, and synth. These are all now sitting on their own discrete stem. But if you didn't want that, and you wanted to essentially group everything together in the exact same way that the track is represented in Studio One, then we would use the tracks option. Now, just to kind of drive this home further, I actually have some other examples that I've prepared because I think once you see these three different examples, you will completely understand what the main difference is here. So let's go ahead and let's open up an alternate example. I'm not gonna save any changes to this one, and we'll just delete these files, okay. 
So now we're looking at a Studio One song. We have a basic drum loop. I'll go ahead and play this. And for now, I'm gonna just going to mute these two channels over here. Okay, so a really, really simple drum loop. And I've just repeated it out here so that we have some different variations or rather I've extended a little bit. So now let's take into account some processing that we've done here. So the first thing I've done is I've created a send to a bus and I've essentially just pulled an 1176 up and I'm just kind of smashing this in all buttons mode. So now if we engage this send over here, which is sending to a parallel bus, now we've got a completely different sound, right? When we listen to these together. Furthermore, I've also done the same thing and I've just added a reverb. So we have one track in Studio One, but this one track has two different sends. One of them is going to a parallel compression bus, and the other one is going to a reverb, which is sitting on an effects channel. But essentially, if I think of this sound, all three of these elements make up this one sound. So let's take the same kind of concept that we learned in the previous example, and we'll do our export stems. So this time I'm gonna export stems, and I'm gonna go to tracks. Notice again here, we only have the option for one track. Regardless of the fact that these are actually visible in my arrange window, when we're talking about tracks and exporting stems, only actual tracks will be visible. Okay, so I'm just gonna close out of this for a moment and I'm gonna make sure that both of these are solo safe. And let's go ahead now and let's render out our stem. We're gonna choose tracks and I will go ahead and delete the file name prefix and let's click okay. Okay, so now we have this file over here, and if we have a listen to this, I'll go ahead and solo this. You can see that it has everything that was associated with that track. So, for example, we have the parallel compression that was added on this bus, and in addition, we have the reverb that was added as an effects return from the send over here. So, both of those elements that made up the overall sound of that track were included when we used the tracks mode. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead just for a moment here and let us mute this. And now in this case, I'm gonna go ahead, we'll export stems and in this case, let's leave it at channels. And we wanna make sure that we don't double export this. We're just exporting these three channels. So let's go ahead and delete the file name prefix over here and we'll click okay. So now we have our three different elements. This would be essentially the dry sound. This would be the actual parallel compression, our drum crush bus that we created. And then of course our verb. We can't see it, but let's bring up our, our data zoom. So the idea is when to use these methods. Well, it really depends. I mean, if you're looking to archive something or if you're looking to package a sound, it completely exactly the way that you heard it, then it might be worth using tracks when you're exporting stems versus channels. If you need the ultimate control, and if you're maybe not sure if somebody wants to mix this down the line and you wanna have a lot of control over using a different reverb, or maybe you wanna give it to somebody dry, but you still wanna deliver your effects, then it would be definitely worth looking at channels. Let's go ahead and look at one more example and then I think we'll kind of drive this point home. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go to our acoustic guitar example. I'm gonna click okay. We won't save these changes and let's just delete these files over here. Okay, so I've got one more example. This is basically, we've got a drum mix, we've got an acoustic guitar rhythm, we've got an acoustic guitar lead. Now the important thing to note here is that the drums the acoustic guitar rhythm and the acoustic guitar lead, they're all being sent out to the same instance of Valhalla Vintage Verb over here. So if I solo any one of these, or the rhythm, or the lead. Okay, now the other thing I wanna point out is that in addition to the lead guitar being sent out to the reverb, it's also being sent out to an H delay. And in addition to the rhythm guitars being sent out to a reverb, it's also being sent out to a chorus. So if we think of these sounds over here, we can look at the drums as being a drum loop that's being sent out to the reverb. The acoustic guitars are being sent out to a reverb and a chorus. And last but not least, the lead guitar is being sent out to a reverb and a delay. So when we think of what makes the overall sound of this track, it's actually this track, 
in addition to this reverb and this delay. So if we were to play this with the lead guitar soloed, you're gonna see the LED meters move up for all three of these channels. So here's where we kind of package everything together and here's where everything should hopefully start to make sense. If I wanted to export these stems in terms of rendering all of the sounds into one complete file, then it would make the most sense for me to use tracks. If I wanted to export these stems so that I have kind of a one-to-one -one relationship between everything in my console and each one of these channels in my console spitting out an audio file, then I would use channels. So let's do both. All right, first things first, we're gonna to go to song and we're gonna to go to export stems. I'm gonna choose tracks. And in this case, there's only these three tracks that are available. Now keep in mind, underneath the hood, we have the sends that are happening. Our drums are being sent to the reverb, our guitars are being sent out to reverb and chorus, and our lead guitars are being sent out to reverb and delay. So back into our export stems, we'll get rid of this file name prefix, and we'll go into tracks, make sure all three are selected, and click OK. This is going to export these stems and it's going to bring them back in. So now if I listen to any one of these files, these are my drums over here. You can hear my drums with reverb. This is my acoustic guitar with reverb in terms of my rhythm. And chorus. And then I have my lead guitar that has reverb and delay. Keep in mind, these were effects that were applied as send effects. They weren't on the actual channel. So everything that was included in this one track on the sends has been rendered into one stereo file. Now, let me go ahead and mute all three of these. Let's come out of solo safe mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing this time, but this time we're gonna go into channels. Now, I'm going to deselect these three because these are the stems that we've already brought in, and let's export all of these as channels. I'm gonna delete my file name prefix, and in this case, we'll leave everything as is, and we'll click OK. Okay, so in this particular case, now we have, let me close my console for a moment, we have our drums, and then we have our guitar, and then we have our lead guitar. But these are essentially just as they were coming out of the console. And then we actually have our reverb, our chorus, and our delay as separate stereo files. So if I was to solo out this reverb. Now, another thing to keep in mind is because this reverb was being shared amongst all of these tracks, the print or the audio file that's rendered when we use the export stems is going to be a mix of all of the instruments together. Now, that may very well be the case that that's what you want. You might want to have just an audio version of this effects return. And if you had sent all of the tracks in your entire song into that, then you would have a balance of however you sent those with your sends. But if you need to have the effects sends rendered into the file, then it would definitely make more sense to use tracks because as we know, when we use tracks versus channels, it will render all of the effects sends that were sitting on that track, it will render it into the final audio file that gets generated. And there's a lot of information, but hopefully I made sense. And hopefully from these three different examples that we looked at, you can kind of understand when and where it might be more usable or practical to use tracks versus channels. But the main thing to take away from this, as always, is that any time that you use channels, it will essentially be generating an audio file for every track in your console. So in this case, if I use channels, I would have three audio files. Each one of these files makes up the sound that we're hearing. If I used track, we would essentially be merging the effects return and any parallel compression buses into one single audio file. So tracks versus channels. I know this can be confusing. Hopefully this video helped and didn't make it more confusing for you. That's all the time I have available. So as always, if you're finding this useful, please go ahead, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.